This is not the church of Emmanuel Christ, of Latter-day Saints, of Joseph Smith. This is the church of Jesus Christ. In coming days, those who do not keep the commandments and observe the laws of God shall be burned at the time of his coming. Are you a full tithe payer? so plain and precious. Finally, the Book of Mormon is the keystone of testimony. Just as the arch crumbles, if the keystone is removed, so does all the church stand or fall with the truthfulness of the Book of Mormon. The enemies of the church understand this clearly. We declare without equivocation that God the Father and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, appeared in person to the boy Joseph Smith. Our whole strength rests on the validity of that vision. It either occurred or it did not occur. If it did not, then this work is a fraud. That restoration began 200 years ago this spring when God the Father and His Son Jesus Christ appeared to the young Joseph Smith. Travis Wingdon cell. Last night at 6 p.m. began the Jewish holy day of Purim from the book of Ishtar. I mean Esther. It's the same word. <coughs> Article of Faith number 8. We believe the Bible to be the word of God as far as it is translated correctly. We also believe in the Book of Mormon to be the Word of God. Um, 
Moses chapter 4. Starting in verse 5. After going into great detail on how to identify Satan and his plan of happiness. Apparently Mormons all missed this. Or they willingly worship Lucifer. But anyway, verse 5. And now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which I, the Lord God, had made. And Satan put it into the heart of the serpent, for he had drawn away many after him. Ooh, that's right, I get to put in my favorite part of the temple text. drawn away many after him, and he also sought to beguile Eve, for he knew not the mind of God. Wherefore he sought to destroy the world, and become king. You will never go hungry again. No king, no king, na 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 na. Fools, there will be a king. I will be king. Be prepared. And he said unto the woman, mistranslation, mistranslation, mistranslation. <coughs> they fall. And should I try it? It's been years. Adam, where art thou? I heard thy voice and hid myself because I was naked. Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou been partaking of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, of which we commanded thee not to partake? The woman thou gavest me and commanded that she should remain with me, she gave me of the fruit, and I did eat. Eve, what is this thou hast done? The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Lucifer, what hast thou been doing here? I have been doing that which has been done on other worlds. What is that? I have been giving some of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil to them. Lucifer, because thou hast done this, thou shalt be cursed above all the beasts of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. If thou cursest me for doing the same thing which has been done on other worlds, I shall take the spirits that follow me, and we shall possess the bodies that thou created for Adam and Eve. I will place enmity between thee and the seed of the woman. Thou mayest have power to bruise his heel, but he shall have power to crush thy head. Emphasis on it. Then with that enmity I will take the treasures of the earth, and with gold and silver I will buy up armies and navies, false priests who oppress, and tyrants who destroy, and reign with blood and horror on this earth and increase our stock portfolios. <laughs> Commit SEC violations. <clears throat> Depart. We'll put in the original, see how well I did. <sighs> Alrighty. Of course, we all know that this has to do with the latter-day prophecy of the Christ in the latter days, saving Mormons from the great and abominable church, and going to Zion, and peace and happiness, as Mormons are free, no longer have to pay tithing, no longer paying the prostitution price for their wives, alright, everybody believes. chapter 2 do the Moses version
And it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Behold, I reveal unto you concerning this earth, heaven and this earth. Write the words which I speak. <clears throat> I am the beginning, Alpha, and the end, Tau, the cross. There's revelation for you. The latter days, the three days of darkness, from the sun god at noonday, Emmanuel, over the United States of America, the Almighty God. By mine only begotten I created these things, yea, in the beginning I created the heaven and the earth upon which thou standest. And sure enough, signs is Alpha. Can't do it. Alpha and two towels. Because Alpha has two towels in it. When I tip it on its side, it's the shadow of the sun on the earth in the latter days for the three days of darkness, which lasts for three hours of darkness. Giving you the date and location and the name the Christ and Mormons missed it because 15 days left Mormons you missed the latter days you not only missed the exodus you missed the whole latter days how humiliating the church of who of what and you missed the whole latter days <sighs> because of the wrong Christ <clears throat> and the earth was without form and void Tohu bohu. and I caused darkness to come up upon the face of the deep and my spirit moved upon the face of the waters for I am God and for some reason the author of Genesis decided to put in the Egyptian Ogdod story for that one verse, but then went back to the Heliopolis creation glyph for the next two chapters. Uh, what are you thinking? <laughs> this was unnecessary. <laughs> and so Joseph Smith, April 7th, the day before doomsday, 180 years later. Joseph Smith died in 1844, June 27th. April 7th, he gives the King Follett sermon for the funeral services of King Follett. Yeah, his name was King. <clears throat> and in there he says, the biblical Hebrew text is wrong. Wrong translation. We believe the Bible to be the word of God as far as it is translated correctly. It's not translated correctly, nor is the biblical Hebrew translated correctly. Biblical Hebrew was created in 800 to 1000 CE. And it patterned it after the Septuagint and the Latin Vulgate less the Latin Vulgate, more of the Septuagint. And as such, there are errors in the Biblical Hebrew text, though the Jewish Publication Society has the one and only correct translation of the Biblical Hebrew text. Our King James Version is way wrong. <coughs> And so what uh, was being attempted here was to include extra things that needed to be brought to our attention. They weren't intending to go to the biblical Hebrew text and make a rendering of the correct translation. Dear God, what are you thinking? You're not a translator. Don't speculate. <clears throat> and so 
so even in the Book of Abraham, it was done the same way. It was just added information beyond what the selections from the Book of Moses gave us. And so, <clears throat> there's a lot of things that require an actual translator. Nelson has not claimed to be a translator. And so John Dee, in the Gospel Topic essay, Translation and Historicity of the Book of Abraham, made Joseph not a translator anymore. Dumbass Dee. Denier of Joseph Smith in the Book of Mormon. Alright, so there's much more that I'm going to be going over with you today. Because it's Purim 2024. Right before, 15 days before the end of the latter days that latter day saints missed. How humiliating. This has got to go down in the history books. All the prophecies of all previous generations all prophesied of this and Mormons sleep through it? like Peter, James, and John did at the Mount of Transfiguration. Oh, wait a minute. They did prophesy about this? They knew Mormons would skip and miss the latter days? <sighs> Is that why the Book of Mormon says that Mormons are going to be utterly destroyed? Hmm. Great. I have to live in a cave for the rest of my life. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Not the correct translation. There's the name of your God. Technically, Yah, which is not really your God, but Yah contains the Paleo-Hebrew symbol for the Heliopolis creation glyph. The Jews used the script as prophecy and revelation. Thus, signs is the spelling for the latter day signs in heavens over the United States of America to mark the latter days. <clears throat> and I, God, saw the light that it was good, and I divided the light from the darkness. It's actually the sun of light and the sun of darkness, which goes to the Dead Sea Scrolls, the the war scroll of the sons of light and the sons of darkness. There it is, right there. There's nothing new. It's right there. We just need to translate it correctly. Oh, I did it. Huh. I trusted Joseph Smith. And sure enough, using science, I deciphered Paleo-Hebrew and then ran the test and found out, oh, yeah, okay, Joseph Smith was right. It does ruin the Bible. Elohim is plural and is not the name of God. And the new name of Yah is given to him after he completes the creation in Genesis chapter 2 verse 4. Dumbass scholars thinking it's a separate text. They never even bothered to check they denied history that Constantine screwed everything up. And I, God, called the light day. And the darkness I called Lilla. Emphasis added. I do this on purpose. And this I did by the word of my power. Because Bara says so in Paleo Hebrew. Alright, the first day. Um, let me come back to you. So we need to go to. Night in Hebrew is Lilla. And I did a little thing for you, and we'll remember to put it in the video. 
Now there's a difference between Aramaic and Paleo-Hebrew script. Anybody who says they're an evolutionary development of... No. Liars. They don't know. They didn't decipher Paleo-Hebrew. I did. Dear God. All of this ties in together. All these people who claim to be scholars, who get paid to be scholars in this field, and they don't even know their own field, and they're getting paid to have a lifestyle with this? Dear God, what a cushy job. <laughs> I just make things up for a living and I get this nice fancy home. In an office at the university. <clears throat> God. Free grant money. <sighs> it's composed of L, that Yah symbol of the creation glyph, and then another L. The H afterwards is just the grammatical termination for the feminine singular. In the other version of the Masoretes, there were two groups that each had different ways of grammatical termination and vowel pointing and blah blah blah. You mistranslated things, strip it all, go back to the original Paleo Hebrew from the Dead Sea Scrolls. <coughs> and and so the other one is the T, which is the access from the Egyptian feminine singular. That's why Lilith is used by other Jews in the Paleo-Hebrew text they write. Like the Talmud, for example. <coughs> but this is who they're talking about. And in Aramaic, it has the J stroke for a human being, and then it has the little reverse L sticking out from the head. Excuse me, that is the Uraeus. Did I pronounce that correctly? It's the little cobra that sits on the crown of Pharaoh's head. Thus, Lilith has been associated with serpents. Yeah, we just got through talking about a serpent in Genesis, huh? Yeah, it's all tied together. They're trying to visualize it for you. But this is Aramaic, it is not original Paleo-Hebrew. Doesn't matter, during the Roman period time when the Jewish author wrote this, he could have used either script, he knew either script. And so, yes, it also corresponds with the Covenant Path Arm Covenant Oath, which is sticking out from the body. Thus, the J-stroke is the human body. <coughs> and so they correspond to the same thing. And then snake version of the garden, the serpent, is there causing the fall, and the covenant is then made after the fall. Thus, they're one and the same. Thus why the pharaohs wore the cobra on their foreheads, because it's Egyptian in origin all over the Egyptian documents. I don't know why Egyptologists couldn't figure it out. <coughs> and so, yes, that's why the creation glyph, the combo glyph of the yah z shape is right smack in the middle between the two. The, it, it's when you have a pattern like this, there's multiple ways to translate this as a visionary language. It's not just one word, as is incorrectly translated as night. There's multiple meanings 
involved in this. <coughs> and so the the Paleo Hebrew, and yeah, you're getting updated information. The serpent cobra thing is added to the meaning. In case you ever go to my uh, academia page and download or check out my uh, Paleo Hebrew script. So now you know. I'm always testing, always checking, and so yeah, there's things to add as I go through. But you can see why it needs to be added now. <coughs> and so I just wasn't wrong, I just was in a rush because I now knew we were in the latter days and so got it quickly published so that I can do research cramming on signs in the heavens for you back in 2017. <coughs> and so the serpent in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 in Paleo Hebrew which I probably should have done the Paleo Hebrew what were you thinking Travis both so I'm gonna fix it live <laughs> and 26 size font the water symbol for the upper waters because it's last <coughs> and then the sign for the heavens the waters of heavens therefore and the J stroke with the the serpent what the Jewish author's doing. <coughs> and then we'll save the PDF so that we can then replace it. You don't hear the beep. Are you sure you want to replace it? Yes. Alright. Next we have Story of Lilith. Lilith, 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 Lilith. And we got two of them. And we got to do this one first before the god Yah, Heliopolis creation glyph. Okay, now this. Legend is by Ariella Pelala, and she makes it very clear that Constantine screwed up the Jews. As she's guessing that it's tied to Genesis, obviously, but she's using the documentary hypothesis, separate document theory. Come on, no, Heliopolis creation glyph, same document. And so she's claiming it's the priestly version, appears in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, where in Moses' version, and I, God, said unto mine only begotten, which was from with me with, from the beginning, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And it was so. And I, God, said, let them have dominion over the fishies of the sea, and over the fowls of the air, over cattle, and over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And I, God, created man in mine own image, in the image of mine only begotten, created I him. Male and female created I them. No, they're not twin looking. 
it's not literal history prophecy of the latter days guys people who don't know should not be speaking and speculating and yet people just flock by the multi-thousands to listen to their dumbass comments of lies and so God blessed them and said unto them have orgasms and produce babies you're naked <laughs> here's how you do it alrighty oh no it's in the Moses version too and they were both naked the man and his wife and were ashamed because it's porn <laughs> no it's Lucifer's plan of happiness remember <sighs> God. and so yeah the Egyptian Heliopolis creation glyph continues here as Shu is told by Atum to separate his children, Nut and Geb. Geb is the earth, Nut is the woman in the heavens. Lilla, the night. And she's pregnant, too late. Kids will do what kids will do. And so King David had to come in and add five extra days to the calendar to make it the civil calendar rather than the religious calendar. So that on those five extra days, the five babies were able to be born. And the first one was the the first pharaoh of Egypt from Abraham, Osiris. Alrighty. <clears throat> and thus explains why Canaan was cursed because of getting Noah to seal them together <laughs> when he was drunk. Ham is Kim. I just did this video the other day. It was a Jasmine comment reply video. And so, still haven't had word back yet from Jasmine. So, I hope there wasn't complications. Alrighty. And so, then, uh, Shu, the father of Nut and Geb, is the one who breathes life into Adam as Tefna, the wife and mother of, Shu, of Te, uh, Nut and Geb, is the moisture that falls on the earth and thus forms Adam's body, which is Geb, and so it's not a separate document. Quit. It hasn't been tested. It can't be tested. We don't know the documents, and so you can't use a theory that can't be tested. you got to dismiss it. You can't keep using it and perpetuating it and building upon it and creating other source documents that don't exist either. Because you can't test it. It's like Mormon apologists using the missing plates theory. No, you can't do it. We don't have the plates. You can't use the theory. Come up with something else. Try science. Linguistic science, says Sidney Rigdon's the major author of the Book of Mormon. Factor that in. You have to. You have to explain it. You can't dismiss it because your missing plates theory feels true. <sighs> Dear God. Pathetic. I'm willing to bet Kwaku brought that up. <laughs> 36 plus thousand last I saw. Dear God, there are so many people who are twisted up now. Those two do not know their Book of Mormon, even though Nuance Ho thinks she's got the better position on Kwaku because she knows that the Book of Mormon is plagiarized. <sighs> Go to experts in the field, people. 
There are none. It's just me. Nobody cares. We don't like your nature and character, Travis. <laughs> All right. In the Middle Ages, a guy named Jesus, Ben Zira, also known as Alphabet Ben Zira, is the name of the book, told the story of Lilith. And she's still using. Oh my god! Stop! Don't do it! She's talking about the Yahweh and the Yahwist and the priestly versions. No! <laughs> so let's get to the story. It's from the Heliopolis Creation Glyph, dear. Heliopolis Creation Glyph. Atom, Shu, Tefnut, Nut, Geb. This is what they're talking about. Nut is Lilith, the first wife of Adam. Okay? Technically, Eve would be Nephthys. <laughs> <clears throat> which she was not given to Adam until after the latter days and the conquering of the great and abominable church. But because Mormons worship Lucifer, Lucifer is going to win and have dominion over all the face of the earth. I reign from the rivers to the seas, or the ends of the earth, whatever he says in the temple. No one dares to molest or make afraid. Because all Mormons worship him. And that's his name. His baby name meaning is Lucifer. And he runs the Latter Day Church. Amazing. And Mormons all miss it. <sighs> the serpent himself. He's here. Mormons aren't fearing and trembling. <sighs> okay, so Alphabet Ben Sira is right before... The, uh, the biblical Hebrew text creation, or during the same time period, 800s to 900s CE. <clears throat> and here's the story. According to the uh, Jewish female who's writing about this, Lilith was Adam's first wife. But the couple fought all the time. You gotta love each other, people. You need to teach sex ed. Men need to understand women and their bodies and how they function and how they respond behaviorally. Likewise, women need to understand men and their bodies and how they behave and function and why they have mood swings. See, women, you need to be more sympathetic and empathetic with men. We have mood swings. You need to tolerate that, not try to force our behavior to conform and comply to your will. You don't want us trying to tell you how to live your life and run your body, do you? We would never do that to you. We would never deprive you of an abortion. <laughs> Yeah, this is why there are problems. Christians. Who all worship Lucifer. Call his name Jesus, which is the wrong name of the Christ of the Jews. <clears throat> and so the problem that they had was with sex. Because Lilith... Nut is on top. Adam, Geb, is on the bottom. See what Jesus is doing here? This is the book of Jesus. Jesus, son of Sirah. <clears throat> and so, 
in this situation, they're claiming that Adam was always on top. He's, he's, yeah, he, he's trying to twist it to also get Jewish women to conform and comply to be on the bottom, which is the common position that all women typically want to do with their first time. I don't know why. It's more fun for women on top, but it's woman's choice. It's up to the couple. Uh, and so, because Adam did not want Lilith on top, she left him. And he's all alone in the Garden of Eden. And God sent three angels to convince her to come back. Technically force her. <laughs> commanded that she come back to her husband. You are sealed for time and all eternity. You need to be with your husband. You are violating the law and you will be destroyed. <laughs> and so technically there is no polygamy going on here because it's a divorce. Sorry Brigham. Nice try. So sad. the Danites of Brigham Young, if not Brigham Young also, reference Lilith to justify polygamy. If you didn't know. And, and so yeah, she gets a divorce. And she uttered God's name. Amen. And now has its powers. She goes on a drunken spree, murder spree, as a cow, and destroys mankind. They're all tied together. Just different stories, different characters, all the same thing about the latter days. And she made a covenant and promise that any child through Eve would be murdered. Eve usurped the birthright and blessing position as the first wife. And so the Christ is now going to come through Eve's womb, not Lilith's womb. In case you're unfamiliar with Rachel and Leah with Jacob, the usurper, who gets his name changed to, oh my god, Nelson, what the hell? <laughs> Yah, prince of God, to become king. Yah, the sea. Yah, Heliopolis creation glyph. It's all about the latter days. He's Amun. And so, yeah, Esau goes and marries Judith, the name of Emmanuel's latter-day mother, which, yes, usurper, the betrayer, and yes, she did. And they have a son who's named Ra. A weird thing in Genesis that the author is pulling because Judith disappears when he's listing the names of Esau and the children <laughs> he renames Judith what are you doing stop it people don't even know Hebrew anymore and you're already confusing them <laughs> which Ra became the 19th dynasty adoption of the sun as it was syncretized with Amun, and so thus Amun-Ra. Ra is the sun throughout the whole day. Amun is the sun at noonday, whereas uh, 
Kefri. Uh, Kefri is the sun in the morning, the rising sun, Omega as the rising sun, and then Omega as the setting sun is Atum, the Ancient of Days, the one who told Shu to separate them. But oops, pregnant. And so, yes, Osiris is Joseph Smith, because he was murdered. And, and so then there's an amulet that's involved in the Jewish practices of superstition, as they don't understand why the amulet, other than it's designed to protect babies when they are born from SIDS syndrome with the names of the three angels written on it. Too many people call it witchcraft. Shame on you. Bunch of evil people calling the Jews witches. Right ex FOMOs. Joseph Smith. D. Michael Quinn. Mormonism and the magic worldview. Bleep you, D. Michael Quinn. You got it wrong. Jewish, not witchcraft. All right, and then Wikipedia. is Elijah. Yeah. Okay. Sanui, San Sanui, Sem Nai Laf. Adam Yahweh, Kadmon Life Lilith. Shaddai. I think those three S's are the names of the angels <coughs> on the uh, amulet. Well, they're saying it's from magical texts, and the museum is the following, which belongs to a widespread category of Jewish charms amulets. All right, so. <coughs> As the story goes, Elijah, the prophet, God, Yah, remember Mount of Transfiguration, Joseph Smith, Kirtland Temple, Mount of Transfiguration, prophecy, latter days, he has the keys from Malachi for the latter days. The prophet was walking in a road, the road to a mass. Yeah, 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 yep. I did that video not too long ago, like maybe last month or something like that. Emmaus is east, so the road to Emmaus is going east, and this is after Jesus had died. <laughs> it all has to do with the latter days. As in the East, the Christ, the sign in the heavens of the Christ in the East, going from the East to the West, or it's West, I'm sorry, going westward from the East. So the sign is in the East, he's going to the West where he starts his ministry in the desert, Egypt. The 
ones who don't have the authority of the priesthood. Whom Matthew 24 tells us, hey Mormons, don't go with Brigham Young into the desert. Oops, false prophet, false Christ. Right there in the Bible, you missed it. And so yeah, the road to a mass has to do with Jesus to the apostles. Going to Salt Lake City, Utah, Egypt. Now, Joseph told you everything has to do with you Mormons. And sure enough, yet again, Judah, Utah, Judah, phonetically the same. Huh, betrayer. Huh. This is weird. Prophecies are weird. They're so accurate. And Mormons don't believe it. They missed it. <clears throat> and he meets Lilith. The great and abominable church. The woman. Eve is the Zion wife after divorcing the great and abominable church. There are only two churches Church of the Devil, Church of the Lamb. Revelation 19, 8 April 2024. Supposed to be 15 days left. You missed it. <clears throat> and all her band of Gadianton, the Danites. And Elijah, which is the man like Moses, Emmanuel, the Mormon Christ of the latter days. Where are you going? Foul one and spirit of foulness with all of thy foul band walking along. <laughs> and she answered and said to him, My lord Elijah, I am going to the house of the woman in childbirth who is in pain, pains. She's going to murder him. The baby came on the 23rd of September 2017 on the road to Emmaus. Elijah going to Egypt to Salt Lake City, Utah, the great and abominable church, led by Lucifer, Lilith. This is what they're doing here. This is what Jesus is doing. The book of Jesus. You believe in the words of Jesus, don't you? <laughs> and so, yes, just like Revelation 12, the serpent wants to destroy the Christ of the latter days. As soon as it begins his ministry in Utah to Mormons. 23rd September 2017, the first year of the latter days. The three days of darkness, 21st of August 2017. There's a reason why they go over church history sites. Specific church history sites. And so yes, the great and abominable church wants to murder the Christ to protect their authority, to get their kingdom back from the big, bad, mean United States that punished them for crimes. All right. And so, uh, she gets very graphic on how she's gonna murder him. <laughs> to suck his blood suck the marrow out of his bones to devour his flesh. This is where the sacrament comes in. Eat the blood, drink 
heart, eat the flesh, drink the blood of the body of Joseph Smith, Osiris. It's not vampirism with cannibalism mixed in, but this is where they came from because they did not understand. And blessed his name, Emmanuel, which Shem in Hebrew is name, the name of God, Samuel, with a ben from the name blessed shalt thou be restrained and like a stone shalt thou be medusa from the greeks serpent woman serpents turn men to stone for seeing her naked <laughs> That's why Utah is so concerned about children, because if they see a woman naked, they'll turn to stone just like all babies do. <laughs> and so babies cannot breastfeed, because they'll turn to stone and die by the hand of Lilith. <laughs> Gotta give them rice formula. God, Christianity is so corrupt. And she answered and said unto him, For the sake of Yahweh, postpone the ban, and I will flee, and will swear to thee in the name of Yahweh, God of Israel. See, he's using the uh, Masoretic Jews uh, version in this particular instance. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is a much later date than uh, Jesus Ben Sira. Uh, there didn't, I didn't see a dating given by this University of Pennsylvania author, again, who thinks he's an expert, gets paid for having an office and a nice cushy lifestyle. <laughs> know what I'm talking about. I will let go this business in the case of this woman in childbirth and the child to be born to her and every inmate so as do no injury. And every time that they repeat or I see my names written, it will not be in the power of me or of all my hand to do evil or harm. And these are my names. And Elijah answered, I'm not going to read on it, not pertinent here. Answered and said to her, Lo, I adjure thee all thy band in the name of Yahweh God of Israel by Gematria 613 the Jewish commandments in the Torah there's also some debate as to whether there's others they're gonna ask Elijah when he comes He's already here. No, you got it wrong. You're looking beyond the mark. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in the name of his holy Sekinah, and in the name of the ten holy seraphs, the wheels, and the holy beasts, and the ten books of the law. So you can see this is Jewish Kabbalah that's involved in this story too. Uh, the ten books of the law, and the holy beast, and the Bible, and the blessed be he, that thou come not, nor thy band to injure this woman or the child she is bearing, nor to drink his blood, nor to suck the marrow of his bones, nor devour his flesh, nor to touch them, neither in their 256 limbs, 
nor in their 365 ligaments. Really? We have 365 ligaments? That's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. And veins, even as she is... Is that true? Anybody who's a medical doctor and was forced to memorize things? Not able to count. We have Google search. Google knows all. I'm sure we can trust Google. Did you see the dualism that they're being played out in the story? Talking about murdering the baby, which is actually Elijah as an adult. Baby corresponds to the birth of the latter days, used in symbolism for that. Because Jupiter is born of Virgo as the sun in the heavens for the start of the latter days, as was his actual birth sign in the heavens. Being born of Virgo as Jupiter. Jupiter is the Roman, Greek is Zeus, Hebrew is Yah, Egyptian Amun. Liel, Hasdiel, Samriel has rent Satan, which is Set, Paleo Hebrew, King Set. The N is the suffix determinative. Such charms as these are still hung up in Jewish households. Okay. And so now. signs in the heavens today. There are ten. And so we'll just go over the chapter headings of each. Vashti is the king of Ashurus of Persia and Media. He wants her to dance naked in front of all his friends. <laughs> and she disobeys. This is similar to the first wife who doesn't want to be on the bottom, wants to be on top. It's a variation of this. Vashti is Lilith. And she disobeys the king and opposed and so then the king finds Eve Esther Ishtar of the Mesopotamians and Marduk Mordecai is the one who presents Ishtar to the king again Babylonian or Mesopotamian which Babylon also kept going. The Temple of Marduk in Ur of Babylon. No, that is not the Temple of Babel. Who told you that? Some person who doesn't know and is speculating? Lebanon. Beirut, Lebanon. That's the Tower of Babel with the Cedars of Lebanon. Oh my God. Do you not know about Ezekiel's parable prophecy of the 
birth of the Christ in the latter days. Chapter 17. That's why it's a cedar of Lebanon taking the twig from the top branches. Royalty. King. Takes him to America with the eagle. Plants him at his birth in the San Francisco area where he lives in Oakland, California for his nativity and then he moves to Michigan with the five Great Lakes and the willow trees and then he goes to the top of mountains to start his ministry also in the top of the mountain of Utah. Oh my god, it's so simple. And so she's a virgin. I give unto you a sign, a virgin clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, crown of three additional planets in Leo for 12. There in 1st Nephi chapter 1 verses 8 through 10. Revelation 12, the sign of 23rd September 2017. Uh, the plot is already here in chapter 2. So let's find the guy's name. Oh. No, this isn't the plot. This is another plot. So chapter 3 is Haman. He arranges a decree to kill all the Jews in the kingdom. Day that shall burn as an oven. The murder of Mormons by Lucifer, who is Vashti, who becomes Haman. And so, if it's Haman, I'm gonna go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Hold on a second, we gotta check this, because that would be Ham. We gotta check, it may not be. Because the end and the end is King, King Ham. The, the road to Emmaus, to Egypt, as Jesus, as a baby, has to flee to Egypt because of Herod, who had been dead for years. <laughs> He's coming back from his grave to murder Jesus. To Jesus. text. They could have added or taken out a little, uh, let's see, there's John and Tittle. I think Tittle is the portion of the letters, and then Jot is an extra takeaway from the letter itself, I think, or something like that. That would be cool, because that would be awesome. King, King Egypt would have been awesome. So instead, it's the air symbol of the flail with Min, which, yeah, it's King and Messiah, Amen, but instead of the sun symbol, it's the air symbol. And so, yeah, there is a, another meaning involved with that as well, 
for the false Christ. He's from the same name in the city. Let's go back to that again. <coughs> same word. What are you doing? Who translated this? They say it's Ham Edatha. Ham. Okay, I see what you did. So it's not Ham Edatha. But what they're indicating is that uh, Ham is the word of Hammon, and thus the N is a suffix determinative. Hammon, King Ham, from Hammon Datha, which would be a, two words combined together. And so the name of the king is also the name of the father has doth dt is added at the end which yeah that's interesting in paleo the agite okay and so yeah Hammond is promoted with this claim to kill Jews. And so Esther is a Jew. Mordecai and the Jews mourn and fast and thus die prematurely because fasting murders. And so Esther goes in unto the king. Save us. You've condemned me, your wife, to death. See? It's a trap to murder the chosen ones. <sighs> Betrayed by their own. And so thus the king is upset. And there's the Latter day Supper wedding feast at the Zion Temple, the banquet. And so hanged is uh, what they had planned to do. Or it's actually just Mordecai, but uh, he's kind of pissed that he was narked on. Helaman chapter 6, verse 24. And Mordecai, Marduk is rewarded. And Haman mourns and is counseled by his wife. Even bad people have wives. Everybody's having fun but me. What the hell? And so finally, after all this fooling around with feasting, Esther reveals Haman's plot to destroy the Jews. Haman is just hanged on his own gallows. And thus, Deuteronomy 19, that what a false accuser plans for the punishment, is the punishment that the false accuser is to be used, had. Thus Haman falsely accused the Jews, and his punishment for the Jews is to be hanged on a gallows, and so the gallows is now to be used for Haman. That's Purim. That's the whole concept of the day. Lots. Your lot in life. Nephi and his brothers cast lots to see who would go and talk to Laban to get the plates of brass. Laban got it. Okay.
all of this has to do with right now. So now we can go to the signs in the heavens. And I did some research, went back to see previous years for the latter days. So we'll start with 2017. With this being so long as it is, I'm wanting it to be my only video for the day. Nobody believes and is listening, and we have 15 days left. You missed the latter days. You missed the exodus. You're about to be murdered because you don't want Purim to save you. In 2017, the Purim full moon was on the head of Virgo, and she has the two falling stars of Lucifer, thus Lilith. See how the Jews are telling their stories, how the Bible is telling their stories, talking about Purim and all of this. You have the virginids, virginids in the womb that are falling. It's an aborted baby. It's supposed to be uh, Hammon. He's, Hammon d is the one who kicked me out of the church. He says, stop telling everybody on YouTube that Joseph Smith is a translator and that the Book of Mormon is true. Why do you bother coming to church if you're just going to go against the words of the prophets? If they're going against the Book of Mormon, they're the ones who are wrong. And so, I didn't go back to church. Haven't gone back since. No magic underwear. I'm not wearing my amulet. I'm going to die in my sleep. <laughs> I don't have the square and compass on my boobs to obey the church, Lucifer's plan of happiness, taking away my agency. And then the, uh, the, uh, it's the beta virginids and the M. Oh, the Edda Virginids. <sighs> okay, that was 2017. In 2018, there's the Leonids, where the moon is in conjunction with. They're at the hind legs of Utah, Judah, Leo. And there's the Virginid, Edda Virginids on the shoulders of Virgo again. And so the womb Virginids are not there. In 2019, now we have the moon in conjunction right there at the Edda Virginids on the shoulders. Because remember in Isaiah, the birth of the child. The government shall be on his shoulders. So this is how they're playing it out. Virgo, as Lilith, has the falling star Christ in her womb. Not just to murder the Christ, the actual Christ, but to replace him with her child. The spawn of Satan! How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of Virgo? Right here. And so the government, likewise, the fall of the great and abominable church. The fall of the false prophet. 
This is how the Jews are writing their scriptures. So this was 2019. 2020, on her head again. Uh, no, nothing in her womb, but there's the Leonids there at the butt. The lion butt, the rump roast. 2021, uh, you've got the moon, the Pearl moon at Leonids, but it's more at the loins and only the Edda Virginids on the shoulders. 2022, it's back at the uh, Edda Virginids on the shoulder, and uh, there's the Beta, or yeah, the Beta Virginids in her womb. 2023, at the feet of Leo with the Leonids, and only the Edda Virginids. And so this year, this year, this year, this year, nothing in Leo, but there's the Virginids, there's the Virginids at the belly, and it's on the boobs, the shoulders technically, in between. This is the last one of the latter days. The eight days, years of Passover of the Exodus, where you have to put the Lamb's blood, Revelation 19, on the doorposts in 2020 to protect you from creeping death. Oops, you listen to Lucifer on that one. He knew, he called China in January. He knew and didn't tell you and didn't warn you. Your family and friends are dead now because of him. He could have warned you, he could have prepared you. Nope, he's the false prophet. You didn't listen to the true prophet who was telling you to listen to the medical professionals and YouTube banned his videos and kept him from posting videos. Right before conference, he had to go to TWG. <laughs> it was an all out attack to hurt you by YouTube. YouTube's also responsible for the murders that occurred. So, but you missed the exodus, and now you're gonna miss the whole latter days. 15 more days, this is it, this is Purim. You're supposed to be saved. Um, and so now you have to be compelled to believe, as I did the signs in the heavens, the sun shall be darkened, moon turned to blood, stars fall from heaven for each and every single president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. There's somebody in the heavens or way anciently who prophesied of the hatred they have of Brigham Young and his Danites, judges, of the inverted pentagram of Lucifer, with Lucifer as the president of the church right now. It's his turn. This is the pattern. This is it. And here we have, again, the symbolism. The fall of the great and abominable church. The fall of the false prophet. Death. With the penumbral lunar eclipse. That begins this evening. All of this, all tied together. And I think that's pretty much it. I just have to apologize to Stanford yet again. I hope... Uh, YouTube really pisses me off. I will go and try to click 
there's different things to click on when people make comments because I hold all of them for review. There's the check to approve. There's the trash to delete. There's the flag to report. And then there's the uh, circle check or something like that. Or circle with a cross through it to hide users from my channel. And I was trying to click on a person who had made a hate comment and ban him, hide him from my channel, and it ended up getting uh, Stanford's uh, comment instead. And so I tried to go in to find his banned channel to unblock, unhide him, and I couldn't find him. And so I had to then figure out that I to put his channel as approve all of his comments automatically, but I, I can't find his comment, original comment, on the video that he did. So I'm very frustrated with YouTube right now. Uh, Stanford does have email and he has emailed me before, but he's not wanted to do email. And he's not responded to emails. So, yeah, I mean, he can see my videos not signed in, but he's not able to comment as he's not able to talk about how he's doing with his studying of the scriptures. So I'm very frustrated. I'll keep checking today, but. Oh, the Tree of Life, because that has to do with it too. Almost forgot. I made this picture yesterday, wanted to put it in the video last night, but it was taking too long to make the picture, and the video was too long to save, and so I didn't want to wait to finish the picture, so I just saved the video and posted it. And plan to do another video to go over this specifically, but we can include this in this video because it has to do with it. Tree of Life, Jewish Kabbalah, because that's what the stories of Lilith are about from Jewish Kabbalah texts. As uh, uh, the uh, Tree of Life in Kabbalah is uh, the perfecting of the human but it's also many other definitions and translations as well and even gematria and for the gematria part you have uh, 18 line connections with 10 points of the connections that have to do with the perfecting of the human soul, uh, mind, uh, and uh, your heart are also involved. And so 18 times 10 is 180. Now in Jewish uh, vocabulary, the number nine is associated with salvation. Nine is tied to the latter days with salvation because of Shua is salvation. And I believe it's Teshua is the word for nine. And thus, the Latter-day Cross, the final day of darkness, 8 April 2024. And so, because 18 is two nines, yeah, I know, 666, the number of the beast, no. This isn't the Jewish thinking here. Two, there's the foundation, there's the crown. Joseph Smith is the foundation of the church preparing Mormons for the crown. Thus, Messiah ben Joseph, Messiah ben David, from 2 Nephi chapter 3, verse 5, and 6 for Joseph. 
this is the prophecy of the Jews and applied into the tree of life of Jewish Kabbalah. And so ten perfection. And so the perfection of the church is 180 years to complete. Joseph Smith died in 1844 and it's taken 180 years which oh look at that it's 180 years 2024 the last year of the latter days where it's supposed to be the destruction of the great and abominable church and thus the start of the church of the lamb there are only two churches church of lucifer church of the lamb from revelation 19 that's the sign in the heavens 8 april 2024 and thus the millennial reign of the Messiah of the kingdom of Mormons. Mormons don't believe. They're going to have to be compelled to believe. The church is going to have to be destroyed. Lucifer and his kingdom will have to be destroyed. Which means not just Nelson. The whole authority of the church must go. Because if Nelson dies, Oaks automatically takes over. Because that's the way Brigham Young set it up. And so, because Brigham Young set it up that way, and Brigham Young is the false accuser of Joseph Smith, and Joseph Smith died on sun shall be darkened, moon turned to blood, stars fall from heaven. Dear God, child, Faith, how did you miss that? <laughs> Joseph didn't die under a bad omen. He was murdered. Thus the false accusation. I say it in the video. <laughs> Brazilian must be really difficult to understand English. <laughs> and so, yeah, final latter days. Doctrine and Covenants 58. <sighs> Okay. And so, yeah, Libra, the symbol of Omega, which is the 23rd of September to October 22nd, the end of the latter days, or the latter days being September 23rd, 2017. Scales of Libra, facsimile number three, where Ma'at, the scales of justice, is marrying the prince of the latter days. Yah, prince of God. It's just amazing. And it's called the lion in Sumerio Babylonian. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Too much more information to go over. But yeah, the updated death signs of the prophets. It's on Academia. Uh, I guess I can see how it's doing. We're gonna make this my only video for the day, and I have to hope I remember all these pictures to put in for you. <laughs> Ten views. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we have the pattern. 
solar eclipse on 8 April 2024 from Revelation 19 and the penumbral eclipse starting this evening at 10.35 ish or something like that here in Utah time 25th of March or actually tomorrow is it? Well, it's tonight, 24th and the 25th, and so the the total penumbra is tomorrow on the 25th at 2 or something like that in the morning, 1 or 2. Okay. And so, yeah, I also added under Thomas S. Monson the Revelation 12.4 fulfillment. Snuck that in there. anybody is paying attention to the differences of the two and so yeah we're just waiting for the death that's the only blank space left and then the latter days are over with and we're supposed to be in the millennium happiness and joy I can finally be free and do all these many projects that I have backed up without the church trying to murder me or send me malware to sabotage my computer and cause a terrorist attack that shut down the power. I forgot to mention that to the FBI when I reported the security company person who sent me a confession of his crime. And I'm willing to bet the government won't do anything about it. Oh, it's a religion. We can't touch religion. Really? So you're going to let religion destroy America, huh? Well, it's my religion, too, because we're in Arizona. God. You're evil, Travis. You need to leave us alone. <laughs>